Welcome, guys. This is Dave Dawson, and this is one of my favorite times of the week. Why? Because we are doing the deeper dive, where we go deeper into some aspects of the previous week's message. So we are back with a full team, including one Matthew Hessler. Woo! Yeah. Matthew, anything new in your life? Man, yeah. Excited to be uh, the interim campus pastor at West Pasco now and still yeah. doing some duties at, at Richland, of course. But um, yeah, good to be on the team. Dude, we are, seriously, man, we are just really excited about you taking this yeah, on. totally. So you're continuing on to kind of lead a lot of the small group stuff at the Richland campus. In addition to that, you'll be leading the, um, the Pasco campus then. Yeah, yeah. Still keeping my hand on men's rooted and small groups here, uh, although some of that stuff shifts off my plate with the adult ministry team. But then, yeah, preaching and being on the elder team and uh, supervising staff at West Pasco. Okay. No, that's, that is really cool. Hey, so Bethel, Bethel continues on. All right, the Lord continues to uh, bless us and kind of re, you know building and, and sort of rebuilding our leadership team. Yeah, and on the deeper dive, Matthew will be a uh, one of our regulars, yeah. as a regular fixture, pastor, regular, regular fixture. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really why he wanted to be the the pastor out the campus. That was actually all there. I wanted for was I could be on the deeper dive. Yeah. 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 Right. There's got to be a way I can get on that deeper dive. Really sneak into it. Yeah. Okay. He so really, he wanted to wait till we went to the video podcast this is true now that it's being captured on so youtube it's a face that's made for camera yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that is coming apparently huh where a uh, deeper dive will at some point theoretically i think i think, I think now i think, I think we are live. on youtube it's live you are we are the you are episode. you're live dave yep. oh my god we can find man. you on youtube yeah Smile thank the camera, you. Dave. it's right there yeah well good to see you guys there all right <laughs> well so we're sitting here having a good time talking enjoying each other's company however I would say this. You know what I've heard about you pastors? That um, Mondays are a day that you guys should never make a major decision. And the reason being because it's like you guys are like kind of wrecked, kind of beat up from the previous day. Is that a true statement? Hmm. I mean, is that does that resonate with you guys at all? Yes, it does. T to me. You guys, were you going to disagree, Adam? He can't saying, disagree I with your opinion. My answer yet? Go ahead. I'll well, it's because I, I have I've, I've thought of this, and and it's kind of in the same vein. And I and I kind of say this tongue in cheek, but kind of not. Um, that I haven't seen. Um, I say say it, say it this way: the only churches uh, who, where pastors take Mondays off are churches that are dying. I kind of say that in tongue in cheek. That's not like it's. I, I would. I, I don't think that's an absolute. <clears throat> but I, I do see thriving churches and and all of the thriving churches i see those pastors don't take mondays off um and i heard another pastor say this that he, he said uh he said man don't take mondays off because mondays are typically a pastor's um can be a pastor's worst day mm -hmm. um he's like don't give your worst day to your family <laughs> he's like, give the worst day to your church and give <laughs> give fridays when you're kind of more when you have a little bit more energy give fridays to your family so if you're going to take a day off, if it's Monday or Friday, take Fridays off. So that's where I say, Dawson, yeah, the decision-making, so that kind of goes hand-in-hand, hand, I would say. Gosh, if you're kind of blurry-eyed, which you can be after a long day yeah. of, of preaching and meetings and um, loving critique from yeah. people in the church. I, I found that Mondays are great days to fill with meetings, mm -hmm. like certain kinds of meetings that are life-giving with whether it's with staff, like we meet every every Monday for a couple of hours and there's another leadership staff team that we meet in the mornings and um, having life-giving meetings where you're not the one making decisions by yourself, but you're hearing feedback and you're working with teams. That's so much better than other ways of spending your Mondays where you're like, you're tired from the day before, you're self-loathing over your sermon or something that's distracting and <laughs> you basically waste a day. Um yeah, I think Mondays are great to spend with. If if you work at if you're at a church that's big enough that has a, like more more staff than just you, not every church is there um, to lean into those people and the relationships, and it, it starts the week off for me much better than. So a big ways. part of it, kind of getting you to reengage mm -hmm. is being around certain people, yeah. not just being alone. You think of how many pastors are out there that are just they're on their own, yeah. mm -hmm. like they they go into an empty building or whatever, or maybe with just one other person, and mm -hmm. they just don't have really what we have here at Bethel. Which is which is a great team. And actually, at all three campuses, 
even, I hasten to add, even out in Prosser now that you have hired a couple guys out there. Joe T. Yeah. Joe Tips. Yep. Matthew, when's the closest you've ever come to quitting the ministry? Uh, I mean, probably during the the, the, the church planning thing. Um, that was in Colorado? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Church planning in Colorado for seven years. And at various points, just it's just hard work and you're like, is there something else I could do? Anything with else? With my time, that anything I... else, you know, and I, I had worked part-time at the YMCA and felt like I was pretty decent at it. And I was like, there, there is that backup plan. I remember even when we were thinking, we, like when Kate and I knew our time with that church plant was done and we were going to hand it off and all that stuff, like trying to open up that space to have that conversation of like, are we for sure? Like, this is what we want to do. But I came to the, either very glorious or very sad realization. I was like, but even if I took a non-ministry job and I went to the YMCA, I can't stop doing ministry. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to do it there. So like whether we want to work in the church or not is, is I, I told my wife this too, like that's up for grabs, but. But your path is for, pretty well set. <laughs> for better or for worse, like I, I, I still want to mm. make disciples and reach people for Jesus. Like none of that stuff is going to change. Like that's just, mm. that's just part of who I am. You can't walk away from it. So seven years planting a church in a, in a in a pretty difficult area. I'm a little bit familiar with the area you're, that you were at. What what kept you going? Were there certain types of people or a person that lifted you up from the slow of despair? <laughs> yeah, uh, God provides in huge ways. Uh, I think of my church planting coach, uh, just huge, always willing to pick up the phone call and listen to me, quite frankly, mm-hmm. just gripe about whatever... <laughs> was going on uh, a number of times. We talked and be like, you know what? Cause he lived uh, about half an hour outside of Pueblo. Every now and then you know, he'd be like, Hey, just stop what you're doing. I'm, I'm coming. Mm-hmm. We're going to get lunch. Uh, just a great encourager. Love to use the phrase. Hey, give yourself permission to, mm-hmm. and then do whatever. Um, but then yeah, people inside the church at the right times too. Like, you know, you're looking at different ministries and you know, everything's volunteer. So you, you know, man, well, we're going to lose this children's, uh, you know, we call them deacons there, but children's lead, like what, what's going to happen? And then God gives you the right person at the right time. Hmm. How about you guys? Have, have you guys been close to cashing in your chips or no? About uh, four months after I first started in ministry, <laughs> maybe three months. Poor was kind of generous. Yeah. <laughs> it took 90 days. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I didn't, obviously. So, <laughs> well, what about you? Did, was, was there somebody that encouraged you? A coach, a person? A- uh, yeah. I, well, I re- actually, I kind of saw in myself this. And the reason I was burned out um, is that I, I just honestly sh- should not have been doing ministry. Um, I look back; I was twenty three years old, no no formal training, um, and just went one hundred and ten percent energy to the wall um and uh had these just great visions of my own leadership that just were not baked in reality and uh, <laughs> so yeah it just burned out i mean i burned myself out <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I yeah uh and was just didn't have community didn't have friends didn't have some people i could lean on honestly um and what happened, I was single too, uh, and loathing that I was single. I was like, I hate being single. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I actually, I had, I had enough wherewithal in myself to, to reach out to an elder of my church and, uh, said, Hey, can I come over to, to your house for dinner? And, uh, so sat at dinner and, and then they dismissed the kids and said, Hey, go, go upstairs do something. And then I just kind of broke down crying at their mm-hmm. table and they kind of said, what's wrong? So. Yeah, I'm kind of talking them through stuff. Yeah. Good for them, man. And way to, way to weasel in a dinner, too, as a single yeah, guy. Yeah, seriously. Uh, <laughs> Might as well get a bonus. Gosh, nice yeah. you know, there is a time. That explains is, you've invited yourself over and cried at my table so many times, Brooks. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> kind of hard to keep like making that. up issues. To, to, <laughs> yeah, like like, talk about. Man, there was a time when I was a single youth pastor. I think I had like five of seven nights covered at people's houses for dinner. And you just, it was Man, you were developing your leadership skills at least in one area. So <laughs> nice. And the irony is now that you know you're married and you have a kid. You're like, that doesn't sound nearly as fun anymore, does it? No, <laughs> no, it does not. Nice, um, nice night at home. Sounds a whole lot better. Yeah. Well, you guys preached 
last week on uh, Saul, who <clears throat> had a tremendous encounter with Christ. And alas, he was also persecuting the churches, chasing them down, killing them, hauling them off back to Jerusalem. People are terrified of this guy. He does come to Christ, word got out, and then uh, he wants to join people. He wants, to, he wants to join in like, hey, man, I'm with you guys. And people are, are understandably like, uh, no, <laughs> you, you, you go talk to him, right? So <clears throat> we, have this, we have this uh, man by the name of Barnabas, who actually is a great, a great encourager here. What all, I think is a name we've all, um, we're f- kind of familiar with. Can we guys kind of just bring us up to speed on, on Barnabas? Let's take it. Go for it, man. Yeah, well, we could do a little team effort here, but Barnabas is, I don't know, we don't know all of Paul's, all of his buddies, but Barnabas is definitely one of his his good buddies. And we see some of their story here with Acts and also how he shows up later in other books that Paul's writes about, but does a fair amount of missionary work with him. And um, yeah, doesn't he doesn't disappear after this story. But if you guys want to add anything to that. I mean, clearly, so he... Obviously, he's called the son of encouragement, right? That's how, that's how Luke right. interprets that name. But really, like, his real gift is he's the constant mediator throughout Acts. He's always mediating mm-hmm. between two parties who would never get along. Mm-hmm. In this case, in the passage we just looked at, it's yeah, the, church. the church and Saul. Uh, but, man, even, like, they're going to send him to Antioch because how are we going to get these Gentiles and these Jewish Christians to get along? Let's go send Barnabas. Like, Barney. he just connects people. Man. Bridge builder. Bridge mm-hmm. builder. Yeah. Okay, so Barnabas is one of the guys who went and actually brought Saul to the apostles. He explained to them, you know, kind of his testimony, you know, gave, um, kind of gave probably, I would assume, like his word of like veracity, right? Like, this is true. Yeah. Like, this is, yeah. you know, um, how, you know, this is probably just an obvious question, but how valuable is that gift to us as pastors, to you guys as pastors, and to the church today? Sorry, say that again. Which which part? Yeah. yeah. Someone who will go. Someone like Barnabas. Yeah, a Barnabas like bridge a building builder? type person. Oh yeah. I mean, the, I mean, without Barnabas, you kind of wonder what's like where does Christianity go? Yeah. Right. Right. He, you know, he bridged to Saul, who was gotcha. able to. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, we need way more bridge builders, um, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, as as church culture, uh, or excuse me, as our American culture continues to be like less Christian, less church. We need more and more people who are going to be bridge builders between culture and between the church. And how is that going to work? And to navigate those difficult mm-hmm. spaces and even help the church be the type of church that will welcome other people in. That it, every church I've ever gone to, I think, has described itself as welcoming and friendly. <laughs> but what does that really mean? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. If every church is welcoming and friendly, right. then what, the, so, someone's wrong, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're not as welcoming and friendly then as maybe we think we are. Right. And like, if you were someone who was walking in with a lot of hurt, a lot of difficulty or skepticism, how would you feel coming through those doors? You need Barnabas like people who will say, I'll mediate. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And even people like for inside relationships with the church, once you're in and you enter into the mess called the church and there are a bunch of people who are sinners and you hurt each other, like having those people that can connect and help mediate between and help reconciliation happen. All of us know people like that. Like we're all called at some level to be that kind of Christian that we're willing to like step in and help reconcile okay. But there are people who are super gifted in that, and they're willing to put themselves in between conversations between people to try to bring them together. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, bringing people in, but also in the church to have those people who are advocating for health and unity and relationships is so so crucial. And I think in the last few years, we've seen many opportunities where we need that. And I think a lot of people stepping up to be that person mm-hmm. for inside of our church, especially. I don't know if you guys see this <clears throat> in the text here or in Acts in general. Almost a dichotomy between Barnabas and and Paul, where we see Paul or Saul here in in Acts nine, Saul as like so divisive that he almost can't help but but causing trouble wherever he's whatever location he's in. Right, like if 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 Paul had to have a ministry style, it would be kind of like dropping grenades and then like letting somebody else clean up the mess. Right, like he he kind of just he says things that that just get people riled up, and then he kind of like skips town. And then what happens in his wake is kind of some some mm-hmm. fruitful ministry happens. And I just think that 
is there a dichotomy with <clears throat> with Barnabas who like Paul and, and Saul in Acts 9 needs Barnabas. Like if Barnabas what was not there, what would happen? Uh, what, what would what would the story mm-hmm. how would the story have, have been different? I just think that's it's just God's hand in it where uh we have this great church planter, church leader who would not be nearly as effective without a Barnabas there that was able to bring him into a closed door. Uh, uh, say, hey, I'm actually going to bring you in to, to meet the disciples who really are super afraid of you, but I trust you. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do it over and over and over again. It kind of sounds like in... in, in uh, well, I think we see that not to... I'm not going to point out any you know uh, famous pastors or speakers in Christianity that have fallen, but when you get someone that has maybe a bent towards being more on like the aggressive side with how they preach or talk or just like maybe they've got a really good gifting set, but also there's some weaknesses there. If they don't have like that partnering or if they won't allow people into their life to partner with them and help mm-hmm. shave off some of those edges, mm-hmm. like you see, you see the other part of the story where yeah. it doesn't always go very well. Yeah. And so I think for all of us knowing what our what our strengths and weaknesses are and being willing to partner up with people that see our blind spots, see more clearly than we we, we see and also help us to be better at what we do. It's so crucial. Like ministry, ministry in pairs is so much more effective and more life-giving for yourself and for other people than doing like solo where it's just you and you're trying to do it all and be be everything for everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Brooks kind of hit on something. This, this is a wonderful gift mix, mm-hmm. a mixing of two gifts, right? A guy who is bold, uh, at least, especially I think at this point in his life, it just sold out to the truth, you know? It may be perhaps at the expense of a little bit of grace, mm-hmm. but so for Barnabas to come along and not only soften the edges, but but to build bridges, kind of clean up after him probably a little bit uh, is wonderful. And I, I think that's actually fairly common. Uh, I can think of a couple of ministries I know of where the guy was just, just to, the, the lead was just like a barn burner, man. It just knocked, he would knock doors down, but then another guy would come in behind him, right? Uh, by the way, a ministry called, um, oh my gosh, I'm not going to get this. Dawson Trotman. What was what, what ministry was that? Does that ring a bell to you guys at all? Is that one of your family members? or? <laughs> yeah. Is uh, your own ministry that you started in your plug-in right now? <laughs> Dawson my alter Trotman. ego. <laughs> uh, it was, oh, it was a military ministry and outreach to the military. Anyway, he was, this guy was famous, right? Started this ministry, which I'll remember the name in a second, but uh, he he was the kind of guy that as, as his ministry started, started around bases, around other areas, he would go in and, but then he would critique the people that were pulling off these events. And he was so harsh, but there, he had this guy that worked with him that would follow up and just like, just pass, I shouldn't say pacify, smooth over hurt, hurt feelings and stuff. But this guy, Dawson Trotman would not have had the ministry he had without this, without this other guy. So is that, is that then, healthy though? Like that, I mean, like that doesn't sound good and then so there's that side of it and then of course that's raising questions about Saul and Paul too of like yeah is that okay or or is that not okay is that well that's my gift and that's who I am or is that like well oh, brother you might need to learn to chill a little bit like <laughs> yeah I think he's I think there's some wisdom there Matthew I think that uh, yeah and I, th- I okay I'll, I'll ask this does Saul learn that throughout his his life that we can see does he soften at all well, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, isn't Galatians one of his first writings, one of his first letters? Yeah. Or am I totally off? I mean, oh, you're right. I mean, he is. I, I, maybe he wouldn't have changed his opinion on anything, but like the way he writes, I mean, he's like writing these large letters, and the way he confronts Peter, like, isn't wrong the content, but he's just like, you know, I post Peter to his face, and I think Paul. It seems like he's always intense, but maybe he he gets Learns he refines fact. that he grows in sanctification. I mean, because. It's we don't have we're not we're not talking about Jesus right where it's like there's like a Jesus was perfect in every way like Saul is inspired and he's an apostle and he's called to to lead the church but he's not perfect mm-hmm. and like he he had a path of sanctification just like we do and remember the uh, the uh, disagreement that will hit somewhere down the road between Barnabas and Saul where you know Timothy messed up on a missionary right. journey didn't he he wussed out and went home right not and, Timothy uh, Mark. Mark. Or Mark Mark yeah, yeah Mark, Mark. Mark. sorry. And he's like, you know, uh, Paul's like, dude, he's out. Like, I'm not, we're going to take this guy anymore. Mm-hmm. Barnabas is like, yeah, we are. And then <laughs> we find out years later that Colossians. Mark, yeah, 
it, John Mark, John Mark, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Comes back later, and you know, Paul says, "Hey, bring Mark with you. He's, he's useful. He's to you, me, yeah. Exactly yeah. useful to me." And of course, so, I believe the church fathers wrote the Gospel of Mark. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. happens if Barnabas doesn't do that? Yeah. yeah. And then, to answer your question, the other one, would, the example would be First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, right? First Corinthians. <laughs> It is pretty strong, right, in the language. So he writes Second Corinthians and almost apologetically of like <laughs> there's some interesting I, 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 that. I didn't want like my goal is not to destroy like how you feel is almost what it sounds like. But the, he starts talking about the comfort of the spirit. Right. And then even making sure there was an understanding of church discipline, where at first he's talking about the guy being like, treat that guy like a non believer. So in Second Corinthians he's like, Yeah, but the reason is so that he'll be drawn back to Christ. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's good. There is a, there is a change in tone there, but yeah. So I I, I see that I, I I we can kind of geek out on personality types and things. I I think there is God uh, gifts certain people with certain personalities, giftings, mm-hmm. um, and we see that that Paul does things that no one else. Well, God didn't use anybody else to do that; those things, and and, and he equipped Paul and used Paul in ministry that he didn't use other people. And but, he didn't like make a blank slate with with him; like yeah. he retuned <clears throat> his giftings and his personality, yeah, in a way that that only Paul could do. Well, and that strength and that hard headedness probably is very useful at this time. I mean, yeah. the church is under persecution. Yeah. It's you know, it's crazy. The stuff's going on. It's small. It's you got to have somebody who's like like a leader. And he he yeah. was. And true for including right. the Gentiles, right? Like if Saul does not push that envelope nearly as much, mm-hmm. is, is, is the, the, how are they going to do with the Gentiles? Because they were not big fans of that idea. Right. No. Which we're going to get to in several weeks, right? With Acts yeah, 15. Right. And, yeah, speaking of Galatians. I was just thinking like a Barnabas, like I don't, again, I don't know Barnabas' story fully, but like what his conversations were like when he got home, just kind of like taking off the work hat and decompressing from what, what messes he had to clean up each day with, with Paul, you know, just like <laughs> relationally, like that was his calling to help further the mission by being a bridge builder. Well, I wonder if he went home to his wife and then Paul's like, or uh, Barnabas is like, so Paul, Paul was so awesome today. And then his wife's like, yeah, what else did he do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the other side of the coin? Was well, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we look at our church, um, I think Matthew, you had, alluded earlier in our conversation, the fact that even in our country, that uh, there is, a I mean, it's no secret, there's a lot of polarization, there's polarization in churches and stuff. So to have a person like this can be extremely useful to all of us right now, because, I mean, we're all kind of upset, we're all kind of mad, but man, to have that calming yet strong voice, Mm. right, can, man, can bring people together like nobody like maybe nobody else can. So Adam, if you could, like if you could zero in on some Barnabases that you would really like to see, what 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 are what are some of the roles that a Barnabas could do at Bethel Church? Mm. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago on Sunday, just and you guys probably can resonate with this as pastors, that one of the things that bothers me a lot in my mind, not any particular person, just in my own mind, like am I living in a way that invites people to feel welcome? In my community, are we a church that, um, through more than just our speaking, but our acting, like we are a place where, like, we're a Barnabas kind of church where people can come in and there's that bridge built into our community, or are we a church that people kind of get close enough and they can feel there's like this force field of, you know, I don't belong there. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's that's an every person job if we if we all can rise to that of in my relationships outside of church, because I'm I'm building a reputation with the community in my workplace, my school, my relationships. And even here at church, how am I being a bridge builder to bring people in? And if we all take up that, that call to, to live like Christ and to reflect him to people and to welcome people like Christ, that's, that's going to go a long way to be a a bigger witness in the area. Um, But I also think there's the internal aspect. Like we just came out of a, a pretty crazy couple of years with a pandemic. And if you've been around at Bethel, you know, there's been no shortage of conflict and Mm -hmm. division and frustrations, hurt feelings. And those have in some ways healed in people's lives. And I think our church is moving into the future in a great way, but those, there are still lingering hurts. There will be new divisions in people's lives and disagreements and frustrations. I mean, we're, we're about to hit a election cycle again. And that's just like that constant, all the time stirring up 
people, even inside the church. And if we can get our eyes up a little bit higher to see our true calling in Christ to be bridge builders with each other, that when those things come, we are more than anything else ready to pursue each other, to forgive each other, to show grace, and to, to welcome each other. So yeah, it's for the outsider, but also for the insider. If we can rise to that occasion, like we we can be a church that doesn't get caught in in some of these spots that I think are really unhealthy. Anything else you guys would like to add as far as what you guys would like to see out on your campuses? I know you just kind of get rolling out in Pasco, Matthew. I would, yeah, I would affirm everything Adam Adam just said. Uh, I think we need to get back to this calling and recognition that we are missionaries in our own mm-hmm. community. It's not where you go that makes you a missionary. It's the mission that you are on. And we all have a call to be a missionary right here, which is going to cause us to be bridge builders between people who are mm-hmm. not in the church and then people who are. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I'll say that, I mean, I don't disagree with anything you guys just said. Um, I, I look at it when I see this passage, I see, man, I see two people operating in their gifts and how important it is for us to know how we are gifted. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, the, you know, a great way to f- figure that out. If you're, if you're listening and you haven't gone through Rooted yet, go through Rooted. Um, that helps you explore your gifts. Um if if everybody served where God wanted them to serve and and served how God wanted them, him or her to serve, the church would be in a completely different place. Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe as a result, even of our discussion here today, maybe we are the ones who can be a Barnabas to budding Barnabases out there, <laughs> right? That if you you're listening to this and you feel in your heart, look, man, I I have really wanted to step into this certain hot situation, try to bring people together or bridge over something, but you're terrified. Uh, Man, maybe you need to do it. Barnabas stepped into, you know, a situation that could have cost him his reputation. That could have been could have gone yeah. south, and it did not. And the re- the result was just absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope you guys have Barnabases in your own life, right? So on, when those Mondays or Tuesdays, whenever day it happens to be that, man, when you guys are just feeling low, that somebody does raise your spirits, encourage you, speak words of life to you, and keep you guys going because we 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 need you guys. Mm-hmm. All right, well, this is a deeper dive. Today, we have gone deep, someone deep in the life of Barnabas, who uh, is a role model uh, for many of us today. So this is, um, we're all part of a ministry of of the church called Bethel Church in the Tri-Cities in Eastern Washington. We are in Prosser, we have a campus in Pasco, and then here in Richland. Have a great day, guys. If you guys want any more information, you can get on to Bethel.ch. Laters. Laters.